Hello Year 5 and welcome to week 8 of our first session of the week, on Monday's Maths session. We're going to begin today with some arithmetic practice where we're going to look at multiplying numbers by multiples of 10, 100 and 1000. What we mean by that is multiples of 10, for example, are numbers which would be found in the 10 times table. Same with 100 and same with 1000. So I'd like to just pause the video and think about, if you know 3 times 6 is 18, what else do you know? What else can you derive from this calculation? Here's one example. Well, I also know then that 6 times 3 is also 18. So what other calculations can you derive from this example? OK, let's have a little look at those. Well, the first one here is if actually I've got a multiple of 10, actually my 3 has become 10 times bigger, I've got 30 lots of 6. And 30 lots of 6 is 180, because if the lots of that I'm multiplying by is 10 times bigger, then I'm going to have 10 times more. So 30 times 6 is 180. And you can see that there where we've times by 10, and so the answer we've also times by 10. Another example here, 3 times 60 is also 180. This time we've made our 6 10 times bigger, so we've got 10 more lots, hence why we have 10 times, um, sorry, not 10, 10 times more lots, hence why we have the answer, which is 10 times bigger. And another one down here, this time we've made both 3 and 6 10 times bigger, so 10 times and 10 times again is actually 100 times bigger. So 30 times 60 is 1,800. And finally down here then, we've made our 3 100 times bigger. 300 times 6 is 1,800. And I'm sure you've got lots of examples there. You may have even come up with division examples as well. So well done for that. So what is a mental calculation? Well, a mental calculation tends to be something that we can do, a calculation we can do in our head there may be some mental jotting, so we may jot down our mental findings um, as we work, but a mental calculation is meant to be there in terms of a way for us to be able to find efficient and the quickest method to use. Sometimes we need long multiplication, sometimes we need column addition or subtraction, and we need one of those more formal written methods, but sometimes we can use a mental calculation to solve the problem much quicker and more efficiently. So, this example here then, I'm go just going to model now how I might record my mental jottings, and this might be something you can do in your head, which is great, and for others of you, you might feel more com comfortable jotting your, your mental jottings down. So I've got the calculation 30 times 6. And what I'm thinking about in my head is if I made this 30 10 times smaller, I would have 3. And I know that 3 multiplied by 6 is equal to 18. Now this is going to help me because if this is 10 times smaller and this is 3 to 30 is 10 times bigger, then my answer also needs to be 10 times bigger. So 10 times 180, sorry, 10 times 18 is 180. So there's our answer there. Now, looking at this example down here, 30 times 60, I'm going to think about the fact that I know, once again, that 3 times 6 is equal to 18. And I then know if I make my 30 10 times bigger, 30 times 6, my answer will be 10 times bigger, which is 180. Therefore, if I then make my 6 10 times bigger again, making my answer then 100 times bigger from the original fact that I knew, I get the answer of 1,800. So that's just how you can use those mental jottings if you wish, or that mental calculation and thinking may be going on in your head. So I'd like you to pause the video now. You're going to choose a column to have a go at the challenges on the screen. I've also put a little challenge here. It says, can you write a sentence about what knowledge you are using? So if I just, for example, go back to our 30 times 6 here, I know 3 times 6 is 18. So 30 times 6 is 180. And that's how I would use that there. So if you'd like to pause the video now.
And here are our answers. So you're able to mark those yourselves. I put quite a tricky one in there. We're thinking about your 13 um, times nine. If you know what 12 times nine is, we need an extra lot of nine there. Right, so let's have a look at our main session for today. Can I show an understanding of equivalent fractions, decimals and percentages? We're actually building on the work that you were doing last week on Friday. Um, so again, the same success applies using place value knowledge, a knowledge of conversions and a knowledge of the place value grid. We did a lot of work last week on matching percentages, decimals and fractions, and we're just going to be consolidating that today. So we thought about the fact of how we can link tenths and how we can link hundredths to percentages and thinking about the fact that percentages are obviously out of a hundred and decimal tenths and hundredths as well. So on the screen now then you can see I've started with quite a tricky one but I've deliberately done this one for us because this is one we need to try and remember. But what I would like you to do is have a go at matching as many fraction, decimal and percentage equivalents as you can. Now you'll see I've done the first one for you simply because actually we tend to be used to working in tenths or hundredths when we're looking at these equivalents but actually there is an equivalent fraction or um, there is equivalent decimals and percentages for the fraction a quarter. We think about 100 with it being 100%. If we divide 100 into 4 we get 25, so it's 25%. And that always helps us within our decimal. If it's 25 out of 100, it's 25 hundredths. So you can have a go then at some of these challenges. You can see here we've got two tenths in this number. That might help you now with a fraction. And how can you turn that out of 100 to help you with your percentage? And I also put this one in here for you to help you, a half. If you think about the fact that a hundred is a hundred percent is the whole, what would half be? We've got five tenths here. What would that be out of a hundred? So pause the video now and have a little go at some of these. Don't worry if you can't do them all. On the next slide, we can check them and go through some of those with you. Okay, so let's have a little look then. So the second one then we looked at was 0.2. Uh, we thought about the fact that that was two tenths and it was equivalent to 20 hundredths. That then makes a percentage nice and easy, it's 20%. We then had 0.25 again, 25%, uh, which made that slightly easier. We know that's 25 out of 100 and actually if we refer back, you might have even recognised that it was still a quarter as well. We then had seven tenths. Obviously that made our, our decimal nice and straightforward, but we then needed to turn our 7 tenths out of 100. So it would be 70 hundredths, which helps us then with our 70%. 40% then, 40 over 100, same as 4 tenths, we could then record 4 tenths. A half was actually half of 100 is 50%, 50 out of 100 also the same as five tenths and what you might find is to begin with with your decimal you want to write this and that's fine but actually you don't need that place value holder so you can just remove that there like that 0 0.6 six tenths equal to 60 out of 100 is 60 percent six tenths again uh, you can see we had 60 percent 60 out of 100 down to six tenths for our 0 0.6 there Another tricky one I gave you, those of you that wanted the challenge, was three fifths. So you needed to turn that into tenths. Six tenths, obviously we times each of the parts of the fraction by two, gave us 0, 0 0.6. Out of 100 is 60. And 0 0.8 are eight tenths there. Out of 100 is 80. Trickier ones down here then, one out of 100. Actually, that made the percentage nice and straightforward. 1%, but where it was 1 hundredth, it's very important that you've put your 1 in the hundredths place. And finally, 0 0.05, 5 hundredths, so we could record that as a fraction, and that helped us then with the decimal. So today, you're going to be continuing to solve some different problems around finding fraction, decimal, and percentage equivalents. Some of you will have uh, sheets like this, where you're being asked to shade in 10%. So you want to think about what is 10% um, out of the whole 100 and maybe thinking about that fraction equivalent then. 
knowing that it is 10 out of 100, that's 10%. Is there another fraction we've got an equivalent of? Yep, yeah, 1 tenth, because we can divide both of these down by 10. And finally then, what would that look like as a decimal? 0.1. So some of you will have those challenges today. Others of you may have something that looks a bit like this, shading 25%. Well, that's a bit trickier when it's not broken into a hundred parts, isn't it? Like this one before. But actually, let's think about the fact that a hundred divided into four parts would actually give us 25%. It's actually the same, if we go back to our equivalents, it's the same as a quarter. So we'd be looking at shading in a quarter there. 25 and 25 is 50%. Another 25 would be 75 and the whole would be 100. So just looking at dividing that 100 into four parts there would give us a quarter for 25%. Um, this one's a little bit trickier. This one's obviously out of, it's saying shade in 60%, but it's not out of 100 and it's not even out of 10, which makes it quite tricky. It's out of five. So we're looking at fifths to begin with. So what we actually have to do is convert our three fifths into tenths, which is six tenths, which is 60%. So actually then, where we're looking at three fifths here is equal to six tenths. If we imagine we've shaded in our three fifths, what we've actually shaded in is six tenths, which is equivalent to 60%. So it's always really good to refer back to your equivalents to help you with this today. And some of it is a little bit tricky, so just try your best. Um, and you, you are doing really, really well with these challenges. Some of you may then have the chance to find half um, of equivalents to a half, some less than a half and greater than a half. Obviously, just thinking about the fact that what is a half being 50%, we've given you some clues on there, what's a half in decimals and fractions as well. So, and then the last challenge some of you may also have is to try and place these different images and numbers on the number line. So again, you can see 100% here, but thinking about the fact that's equivalent to one. So if you think about the decimal notation, you've got zero and one, thinking about how many tenths to get to nine tenths on your number line. We look forward to seeing your work today. Thank you.